A law enforcement officer lives and works on the razor's edge, never knowing when he'll have to make a split-second decision that could mean death, his or someone else's. That's why good training is so important and why agents are constantly looking for better ways to train. Well, now U.S. Marshals here in Georgia have a new tool, and they put me through the paces. All right, ma'am, can I see your driver's license and insurance, please? Now, let's be clear. There is no such thing as a routine traffic stop. The car is being pulled over because they didn't have their blinker on. Is that I in case? Oh, sh That was the first, but by no means the last time, that I would be shot during this training session. Well, you've been in life and death situations. How real is this? Um, I think it's an excellent tool. This new tool is the Vertra system, a virtual reality simulator that almost completely surrounds the user with potential threats. You never drew your gun, even after she started to drive off. No, because I knew I was dead. No, you're never dead. You never lose. Supervisor okay. James Ergus leads the Southeast Regional Fugitive Task Force, which incorporates officers from local, state, and federal agencies to hunt down bad guys, more than 3,000 of them in Georgia alone last year. Any type of situation that puts our investigators under stress um, allows them to be better officers. Step back, step back. Five years ago, the FBI put Amanda and me through similar paces with the firearms training system, with shoot or don't shoot scenarios projected on a screen in front of us. This new system requires the same split-second decision-making, but also a 360-degree awareness. We don't want to teach someone to only focus on what's in front of them. We create tunnel vision. Whoa, 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 whoa. In this scenario, while I'm dealing with three threats on a parking deck, a fourth shoots me from behind. In a warehouse, I shoot one armed suspect and never see the other one coming. In a bar, when I'm assigned to guard the rear flank, I'm distracted by a fight as my partner tries to make an arrest, and we both pay for it. If you're not paying attention to it, then nobody is. And that was bad. Let's redo it, though. That was really bad. It's all training, and nobody got hurt, but I still, you know, you feel bad. You, you know what, though? You'll never make that mistake again. <laughs> now, when we redo the bar scene, I get it right, and the system records and displays the details. Do you hear me? On the third go-round, when I yell at the shooter to show me his hands, he does. And thankfully, I don't shoot. Mr. Wilson, do you have a gun? <laughs> you think I'm going to shoot a dog without a gun? Another chilling scenario has a man threatening to shoot a neighbor's dog. He ignores the officer's repeated demands that he keep his hands visible and is shot while lifting what turns out to be a beer can. But let the record show, not by me. We do more no-shooting scenarios than we do shooting scenarios because our investigators are going to have more incidents where they don't fire their firearm than that they ever do. Accuracy is key, and officers spend plenty of time on the shooting range. But the practice here is more realistic. When you're out there on the range, you can't turn around and shoot behind you. You right. can't shift your body and, and fire. And this system can fire back with paintballs. So you're trying to shoot me with that thing? With the shoot back hand? Yeah, I, I actually tried to shoot you on several occasions. One of the things you did really well was um, you moved throughout the area that you were working in. Inspector Ergus says officers instinctively look at a person's hands to see whether there's a threat. Uh, you see their face, but what, what's going to kill you is their hands. Um, what's in their hands? For the professionals, you know to always have your eyes in the back of your head as well. But you still have to train. If you don't continue to reinforce good training, then anybody can make a mistake. That's how the pros do it. More than two dozen law enforcement agencies provide full-time investigators to the Southeast Regional Fugitive Task Force, including several local police and sheriff's departments, and they all get to train at that facility in Atlanta, and they've arrested more than 10,000 felons in the last four years. And Amanda, you know, 10,000. And they say that every fugitive while on the run commits 13 more crimes. So getting these felons off the street is incredibly important to all of us. Yeah, it's important you stay alive. Yeah. As the trainer said, though, the more you train and experience getting shot, the better you should be at making that judgment call the next time. Did that happen? Was it easier for you? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. I mean, obviously, I know I'm not going to die. I, I can't even imagine what the adrenaline must be like and how difficult it is for them to make those split-second de split decisions, knowing that whatever they decide to do is going to be scrutinized, perhaps for months and years to come. There's a lot on the line for them and, and for the people they're trying to serve. Thank goodness for that training. Absolutely. All right.